Hello, welcome to McCann's farm. Today we're working on the chicken coop. So my husband Mike has been out here, he started at four o'clock this morning. So we're gonna go over, give him a hand, although he's did, done all this by himself, but he needs some help holding these uh, cross boards. Mike, what do you got going on here? Yep. So how, old, how long did we have this chicken coop? Eight years? Eight years. So we had eight years of old lumber that we will repurpose anything we can. Uh, you can see this stuff over here. It's uh, pretty much shot. We, we have to use caution because kids come to the farm. So we want to make sure it's sturdy and we're going to put these crossbars in. That'll help make it sturdy. And then we're going to put, it's not really a netting or chicken wire across the top because we've worked with chicken wire before and it does rust. So we use this green plastic cover that we're going to try to see if we can reuse some of that. If not, we'll be buying new. And the purpose for your chicken coop, of course, is to have a home for your chickens, but also to have a safe place because we've had problems with, what do we have around here with fox, I know. Yeah, so you have to watch. I mean, there could even be wild dogs that may get over here to the farm. So we want to do the best we can to protect our chickens. Mike built this box. What was the, well, I guess you call it the hen house several years ago and we just open it from the back uh, anything works really we just got some pans in there we got to clean this out we haven't been using it and that's where they lay their eggs so we come here every day we collect their eggs and we hope to get them back in here soon we have our young chickens that were born under a light right now since we still have cold evenings here in New Jersey so that's where we're keeping them so what he does is he makes just a wooden door, which is fine. It swings open. We put a little latch just so kids don't open it and we don't want to lose all of our chickens. And then we put this green cover, which like I said, the pen's been here a while. So Mike thinks maybe this stuff's too brittle to use again. But we'll try to, like this one has a tear in it. And the weather, you know, we have cold winters here, so it's not always too nice to us but we may be able to like Mike said use this for the door how are you doing you getting a new home mm, how do you feel about that she's not coming up to me today I don't think she likes that saw hey look at this blueberries on their way a little pollination action uh, you can hear that buzzing around actually Here, I'll show you some more blooms Here's another one. So many people ask us, we do sell honey at the farm. Why I don't I see bees anymore? And the big problem is that I tell people, do you see dandelions? And they say, oh, no, you're right. I have them sprayed from my lawn. What we got so. going on with the greenhouse? This greenhouse was covered last week. We have this greenhouse here, and then when we're busy, we're going to have, we use this as our parking lot. So customers will pull right up here. And I know a lot of you won't get to visit here. We're not open yet, so things look a little rough. But they'll shop in this house. The next greenhouse is a kid's playhouse where we have things in there, like sensory things for the kids to do. And then the stand is further up here. But this greenhouse will be, people can come in and shop. I've been cutting the grass in here and then we're gonna get some barrier down to get rid of these weeds. I just cut the grass once, we'll go through. We try all we can not to, not to use any kind of spray here at the farm, but you can see how much the, the weeds are taken off in this, this greenhouse and it's a little warm in here. So what we'll do in 
the months to come, probably June, we'll put a black shade cloth on here. And what a difference in the temperature. Now, the, the plastic that we use, we just do one covering here. And it's it's sturdy stuff. I mean, this is we have to cut back these screws. But even me, like, pressing on that, it takes something to get it to, to break yeah, through. Okay. But just hanging out, I guess. You might look at this and say, wow, that's dirty. But remember, they're pigs. I clean that water like twice a day and it's it's like a lost cause. They just have it a mess. All right, guys. Glad to see Mike's you doing well. Let's see if we can reuse any of this. Here, I'll put you through there. So that's what it looks through the eyes of the chicken. Now, this piece has a hole in it, too. I think you're right. We may have to just replace yeah. a lot of it. Now this is the ground. There has been one chicken in here for quite a while and this is what she does to the ground. I mean they love just digging through and the thing that they eat are bugs. So Alright, we're gonna be able to salvage a piece here. What do you think works best? Staples? We're gonna metal nails over there. We're going to try metal nails. The whole lot there they're galvanized. We've done staples in the past, and yeah, like Mike said, they rust, they pop up. And unfortunately, some kids come, you hope their parents are watching them, but they're like leaning in, climbing on top of the chicken pen, and we can't always be here to watch them. All right, well, we're going to get working on this, and we'll uh, let you know how we make it. Hey, guys, watch swinging them sticks. You don't hit each other. They're more than sticks, they're like uh, small trees. All right, be careful. So I, Anita and I grew up at this farm and we just, we love to have people come visit the farm because we want them to leave here with <clears throat> what we had. We grew up here, we, we played with cousins and such great memories of the farm and speaking of cousins like that Anita right now is making pasta salad because we have a birthday party today Uncle John is turning 75 he uh, is pops one of pops younger brothers and maybe we'll take you along to the party so you can meet some more of the family we'll go see what Anita's up to in the kitchen hi friends as Nancy said uh, today's Uncle John's 75th birthday party, so I'm going to be making some pasta salad to take over to the party. So I thought you might like to know how to do it. I just threw um, two boxes of a um, noodle in the, uh, this is the corkscrew noodle. Um, any brand would be fine. I just threw that in some salted boiling water according to the package directions. First I want to cut up all my veggies. Um, at the farm here, it's not the right time of year for the vegetables. So we don't have anything that I can go and pick for you, which would be ideal. But sometimes, you know, you still have to go to a birthday party in the middle of winter when it's not like the most ideal time for picking. So this is the way I cut a pepper. I just cut it, break it open, and uh, pull out the insides. Make sure you have all the seeds out because nobody wants to chomp down into one of them when they're eating. And take some of this white membrane out. It just doesn't look as nice in your, in your pasta salad. Um, I, I learned how to make pasta salad several years ago because I really loved it. And I couldn't find any that I could afford. When I would go to buy pasta salad, it was so expensive. So I had learned how to do it. It's more affordable nowadays, but um, just clean the ends off of your celery. But uh, when I first started making it, I was a lot younger. And it, it was uh, pretty costly, and I thought, I could make this at home, and it wouldn't cost nearly as much. So, again, just cleaning all of the vegetables up here. I want to clean this onion. This is the way I do it. I'm sure you can watch 50 different chefs and come up with 50 different ways to do it. I have some friends who are chefs. They all tell me different ways to do things. Um, some I listen to. Sometimes they're great tips. Sometimes I'm like, this is the way grandma showed me how to do it, so this is the way I'm doing it. 
But actually, this is my own recipe. My grandma never showed me how to make pasta salad. I guess it was not something that was in her uh, in her day that they made. But um, she did teach me most of the my chopping and cutting skills, which again, talk to 15 different chefs, you'll get 12 different ways to do it. So everybody has their own way. And this is just the way I do it. This is the way I peel an onion. Right or wrong, it's the way I do it. Just let me grab a bowl here. I think this one over here will be the best. I like these big stainless steel bowls for mixing and chopping stuff up. Uh, again, they were my grandmoms, and uh, I just like the way it looks. You know, it gives you a lot of room in the bowl so that you can uh, really mix it well. Oh, here comes Teddy. Teddy always is looking for when I am cooking. He likes things to fall on the floor. Although, I don't think a green pepper falling on the floor will be something he's really gonna love. So you wanna just give him a nice chop. I like to have like bite-sized pieces, but not little tiny minced up pieces. So um, I go for about this size right here. So you can see. Um, it's your preference. I like a little bit bigger chunks because I like to be able to see plus. I have picky eaters in my family. This way, hey, if you don't like green peppers, take the green peppers out. Don't eat it. But I like them. Most of my family likes them. So I do like to put the green pepper in. Again, this is just the way I do it. However you want to cut your pepper, that's the way you should cut your pepper. No right or wrong. Again, grandmom's cutting board. I've had this forever. Uh, when I was little, this was the one she used to let me use when I would help her, and she had a nice big one. So, I don't know. When she passed away, I have both cutting boards now, but I still use this one because this is the one grandmom said I could use. So, it's, uh, it's actually like a, a tempered glass of some sort. I've never seen another one like it. It's just plain, clear tempered glass. But like I said, it's the one she told me to use. It's the one I still use. So this is the three ribs of celery. I'm just cutting right down the middle. So that one rib of celery now became three pieces. Just for time's sake, I like to put them all together real close. Let me move this so you can see a little better. I put them all together real close and I use my knife to make an edge and then just cut through the whole mess of them at one time. Saves a little bit of time. Now I know I always watch cooking shows. I do love watching cooking shows. Because um, I like to see how other people do it. Maybe I'm not doing it right. Like I said, I take away what I can. I notice they always say, curl your fingers under. So I'm going to try to curl my fingers under while you're watching it, but I hear that's the safest way. But like I said, I do it my way. This is the way my grandma taught me. My mom was a good cook. My mom was actually a really good baker. I think my baking skills I get from my mom, my cooking skills I definitely get from my grandma. So let's finish up this last little bit here of celery. Again, I'm not like one of those really fast, like I know I watch some of those TV steps and they're like sliding through this like with rapid speed. I'm just a mom and a wife who likes to cook. So I'm showing you how I do it. Here we go. Celery in. Let me check on that boiling pasta. So the pasta is steamy hot. It was just about done when I got over there, so I've drained it. Um, just corkscrew pasta. We'll let that drain just a little more right there in the, um, I have a plate under that, that strainer while we cut our cheese. Now this is um, domestic provolone cheese. Um, the deli that I use, again, this was a six on the cut. It gives you maybe, what is this, four so it's nice big slices. Uh, it was 10 slices of the pepperoni. This makes four nice sized slices of cheese. And again, we're just gonna stack them up run the knife across and make little sticks out of it. This one looks like that's three cuts, four cuts, I guess five cuts will make a nice, uh, a nice uh, small cube for you. 
and then go turn it and go crossways and down again and just get that knife right in there. Uh, provolone is a mostly soft cheese for the um, of the Italian cheeses, provolone and, and mozzarella are probably your softest. Uh, we, I have used um, Parmesan to do this, but it crumbles a lot, I find. So I don't really like, I don't like it all like, crumbly in there. I like like pieces that you can get a good bite on. So there we go with our cheese. Again, this is a half of a pound of cubed up provolone cheese. This is a domestic, you can get it imported. Uh, that to me, like the domestic is really good. I don't want to spend the extra money for the imported where I don't need to. So now we have our veggies in there, which was a red pepper, a green pepper, a half of a large onion, three ribs of celery. Now I just added a half a pound of pepperoni and a half of a pound of provolone cheese cubed. Now we're going to make our dressing. How am I going to do dressing so that you can see? Let's move all this around a little bit. I just grab a canning jar. Canning jar is your friend. This is a recipe that I don't know who came up with it, but it's been in my family for a really long time. We do canola oil. Um, you could use olive oil. Again, it's expensive and I don't really see a big difference in the taste by using the olive oil. But by all means, if you prefer olive, go with the olive. So I'm going to do a cup of oil. Ooh. A cup of olive oil, oh, canola oil, not olive oil. A half of a cup of vinegar. And I forgot water. I'm getting a half a cup of water. There we go. Getting a half a cup of water. Then to that, you want to add your spices. I like to go with a teaspoon of garlic. This is a granulated garlic. I get it from, um, we have a farmer's market not too far from here where um, they have a large selection this is a half teaspoon so I'm going to use two where they have a large we actually did a video about Cowtown um, Cowtown they have a lot of spice vendors there so I like to go buy it in bulk and then uh, actually my daughter Tori bought me these little containers and she made me a rack that holds all of them on the wall so that's where I get my spices over at Cowtown so I have one teaspoon of granulated garlic. I'm going to do a half of a teaspoon of oregano and then a half of a teaspoon of basil. Oops, that was the basil. This one's the oregano. Again guys, I'm just doing this because you asked me to show you how to cook. Now that's your oregano. Then you need about a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. And I like to use a whole teaspoon of a kosher salt. This salt, it's a little bit larger granules, you can see. Uh, it's available right in the same aisle at the grocery store as any of the other table salts. By all means, if you don't have kosher salt, go ahead and use the table salt. I make a lot of pickles in the summer, so I usually have kosher salt on hand. And it, it does have a little bit different taste. If you buy an iodized salt, which is actually good for you to eat iodized salt, um, sometimes the, the, it cuts the flavor of your salt a little bit. So just shake her up really well until you can see that everything's kind of mixed together. We're going to then take our pasta, throw that into the bowl. Ooh, come on. Now I like to make sure that I get some of this dressing that we've made here onto the pasta while it is still hot. Once the pasta cools down, it doesn't absorb that that salt that dressing as well. So just pour this over the top. And my spoon is all the way on the other side of the kitchen. So let's just get everything incorporated, mixed up together. This makes a huge amount of pasta salad. I don't know if you can see this. Steam coming off. Oh, that vinegar will get you a little bit. But this does make a huge amount of pasta salad. 
This is, like I said, for a crowd. This easily will serve 30, 40 people, depending on. Thanks for spending the day with us here at the McCann's Farm. I have the pasta salad chilling in the fridge waiting to go to the party tonight. And we'll check back with the chickens when the pen's complete and the new chickens are back in it, just waiting for the temperature to change. Thanks again, 140,000 subscribers. And, and the messages, uh, we're trying to keep in touch with you. It's, it, it's just been amazing to get calls from all over the world and that you guys are starting gardenings. And we still didn't come up with a name, so we're, we're still yeah. working on that. Yeah, we have a lot of farmies, farmers. I kind of like the Mick farmers, <laughs> seedlings. Seedlings and the peeps was another popular one. And so sweet pea, that was a good. That one was a too. new one I just yeah. saw. So keep sending your recommendations for the names that we're going to call our viewers, and uh, we want to give a little special uh, acknowledgement to some people who have called us. Huh. Did you bring one up? Apple. This is a board of a whole bunch of people that have called in the last few days. If you have a heart around your name, it means that you did something to teach me something or Nancy something when you called or when you send us a message. You gotta... Thanks a lot, we really appreciate it. And Anita's Facebook page. I know a lot of you are questioning that. She's wearing blue. I'm wearing blue. It's actually on the farm Facebook. If you can find the farm Facebook, there is on there, it says, this is Anita's Facebook and it, and it links it to it. So if you like this video, hit like, leave us a comment and be sure to subscribe. Have a great day. And we're going to head out to the party. Yeah, party Me time. Too. Thanks, friends. Happy birthday.